Ernest Bourne was an American film and television actor whose career spanned more than six decades. He was an unconventional lead in many films of the 1950s, winning the Academy Award for Best Actor in 1955 for Marty. On television, he played Quinton McHale in the 1962 A Euro 1966 series McHale's Navy and co-starred in the mid-1980s action series Airwolf, in addition to a wide variety of other roles. Bourne earned an Emmy Award nomination at age 92 for his work on the series ER. He was also known for being the original voice of Mermaid Man on SpongeBob SquarePants from 1999 to 2012. Early life, Ernest Bourne was born Ermza von Borfner in 1917 in Hamden, Connecticut. He was the son of Anna, who emigrated from Carpi to the United States, and Camillo Borfnino, who emigrated to the United States from Ottolio. Bourne's parents separated when he was two years old, and he and his mother lived in Italy for about four and one half years. By 1923, his parents had reconciled, and the family name was changed from Borfnino to Bourne. The family settled in North Haven, Connecticut, where he attended public schools. Bourne took to sports while growing up, but showed no interest in acting. Naval Service Bourne joined the United States Navy in October 1935, after graduation from James Hill House High School in New Haven, Connecticut. He served aboard the destroyer-destroyer minesweeper Arsa Lamberton and was honorably discharged from the Navy in October 1941. World War II In January 1942, he re-enlisted in the Navy after the attack on Pearl Harbor. During the war, he patrolled the Atlantic coast on an anti-submarine warfare ship, the USS Sylph in September 1945, he was honorably discharged from the Navy. He served a total of almost ten years in the Navy and obtained the rank of Gunner's Mate First Class. Awards and Honors Bourne's military awards include the Navy Good Conduct Medal, American Defense Service Medal with Fleet Clasp, American Campaign Medal with Bronze Star, and the World War II Victory Medal. In 1997, Bourne received the United States Navy Memorial, Lone Sailor Award. On December 7, 2000, Bourne was named the Veterans Foundation's Veteran of the Year. In October 2004, Bourne received the honorary title of Chief Petty Officer from Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy Terry D. Scott. The ceremony for Bourne's naval advancement was held at the U.S. Navy Memorial in Washington, D.C. He received the special honor for his naval service and support of the Navy and Navy families worldwide. On February 5, 2007, he received the California Commendation Medal. Acting career, Bourne returned to his parents' house in Connecticut after his Navy discharge without a job to go back to and no direction. In a British Film Institute interview about his life and career, he said, After World War II we wanted no more part in war. I didn't even want to be a Boy Scout. I went home and said that I was through with the Navy and so now, what do we do? So I went home to Mother, and after a few weeks of patting on the back and, you did good, and everything else, one day she said, well? Like mothers do. Which meant, all right, you gonna get a job or what? He took a local factory job, but was unwilling to settle down on that kind of work. His mother encouraged him to pursue a more glamorous profession and suggested to him that his personality would be well suited for the stage. He surprised his mother by taking the suggestion to heart, although his father was far from enthusiastic. In 2011, Bourne remembered. She said, You always like getting in front of people and making a fool of yourself, why didn't you give it a try? I was sitting at the kitchen table and I saw this light. No kidding. It sounds crazy. And ten years later, I had Grace Kelly handing me an Academy Award. Stage, he took and graduated from acting studies, auditioned, and was accepted as an intern to the Barter Theatre in Abingdon, Virginia. It had been named for the directors allowing audiences to barter produce for admission during the cash lean years of the Great Depression. In 1947, Bourne landed his first stage role in State of the Union. Although it was a short role, he won over the audience. His next role was as the gentleman caller in Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie. In 1949, Bourne went to New York, 
where he had his Broadway debut in the role of a nurse in the play Harvey. More roles on stage led him to being cast for decades as a character actor. Films In 1951, Bourne moved to Los Angeles, California, where he eventually received his big break in From Here to Eternity, playing the sadistic Sergeant Fatso Judson, who beats a stockade prisoner in his charge, Angelo Maggio. Bourne built a reputation as a dependable character actor and played villains in early films, including movies like Johnny Guitar, Vera Cruz and Bad Day at Black Rock. In 1955, the actor starred as a warm-hearted butcher in Marty, a film version of the television play of the same name. He gained an Academy Award for Best Actor over Frank Sinatra, James Dean, and former Best Actor winners Spencer Tracy and James Cunney. Bourne's film career flourished for the next three decades, including roles in The Flight of the Phoenix, The Dirty Dozen, Ice Station Zebra, The Poseidon Adventure, Emperor of the North, Convoy, The Black Hole, All Quiet on the Western Front and Escape from New York. One of his most famous roles was that of Dutch, a member of the Wild Bunch in the 1969 Western classic from director Sam Peckinpah. Of his role in the Wild Bunch, Bourne later said, I did, think it was a moral film. Because to me, every picture should have some kind of a moral to it. I feel that when we used to watch old pictures, as we still do I'm sure, the bad guys always got it in the end and the good guys always won out. Today it's a little different. Today it seems that the bad guys are getting the good end of it. There was always a moral in our story. Television Bourne made his TV debut as a character actor in Captain Video and his Video Rangers, beginning in 1951. These two episodes led to countless other television roles that Bourne would gain in Goodyear Television Playhouse, The Ford Television Theatre, Fireside Theatre, Frontier Justice, Laramie, Bob Hope Presents the Chrysler Theatre, Run for Your Life, Little House on the Prairie, The Love Boat, Magnum, P.I., Highway to Heaven, Murder, she wrote. Walker, Texas Ranger, Home Improvement, Touched by an Angel, and the final episodes of ER, the first episode of Wagon Train, and many others. In 2009, at the age of 92, Bourne earned an Emmy nomination for his performances in the final two episodes of ER. McHale's Navy In 1962, Bourne joined the ranks of other sitcom stars such as John Forsyth, Andy Griffith, Danny Thomas, Alan Young, Robert Young, Fred McMurray, and Buddy Ebsen. That same year he signed a contract with Universal Studios for the lead role as the gruff but lovable skipper Lieutenant Commander Quinton McHale in what began as a serious one-hour 1962 episode called Seven Against the Sea for Algo premiere, and later reworked to a comedy called McHale's Navy, a World War II sitcom. The insubordinate crew of PT-73 helped the show become an overnight success during its first season, landing in the top 30 in 1963. Just like the McHale character, Bourne was a long-time Navy man in real life. He thrived on the adulation from fans for their favorite Navy man, and in 1963 received an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. At the end of the fourth season, in 1966 low ratings and repetitive storylines brought McHale's Navy to an end. Comedian Tim Conway said about the sitcom, You know, we were all guys, it was about the war, and about men, so, there weren't many women working on the show, so we can spit, talk, swear, and everything a Euro smoke. Gosh. So, it was male-oriented. Conway once referred to Bourne making new friends off of the Universal set, it was the beginning of the trams, going through Universal. Ernie was probably one of the few people at Universal, who would stop the trams and say, Hello, how are you? He would talk to everybody at the tram. While the show McHale's Navy was going strong, Tim had also said of Bourne's short-lived marriage to Ethel Merman, Ernie is volatile. I mean, there's no question about that. And Ethel was a very strong lady. So, you put two bombs in a room, something is going to explode, and I guess it probably did. The last thing he said about the McHale's Navy cancellation was, we had gone from the South Pacific to Italy, and then, once in a while, we got to New York or something. The storylines were beginning to duplicate themselves. 
So, they actually said, maybe, they had its run. Conway kept in touch with Bourne, for more than 40 years, while living not too far from one another. In 1999, the duo reunited to guest voice in several episodes of the popular 2000s animated comedy, SpongeBob SquarePants. Katie Gerardo's death in 2002 drew Bourne and Conway much closer, as Tim had heard so much of the actress's death. He said he heard his resisting friend once referred to one of his ex-wives, beautiful, but a tiger. Airwolf, Bourne returned to a new contract with Universal Studios in 1983, for a co-starring role opposite Jan Michael Vincent, on Airwolf. After he was approached by producer Donald P. Belisario, who had been impressed by Bourne's guest role as a wrestler in a 1982 episode of Magnum, P.I., he immediately agreed. He played Dominic Santini, a helicopter pilot, in the series, which became an immediate hit. Bourne's strong performances belied his exhaustion due to the grueling production schedule, and the challenges of working with his younger, troubled series lead. The show was cancelled by CBS in 1986, the single guy, he auditioned a third time for a co-starring role opposite Jonathan Silverman in the single guy's doorman Manny Cordoba, which lasted two seasons. According to Silverman, Bourne came to work with more energy and passion than all other stars combined. He was the first person to arrive on the set every day and the last to leave. Merlin's Shop of Mystical Wonders, in 1996, Bourne starred in the televised fantasy thriller film Merlin's Shop of Mystical Wonders. As narrator and storyteller, Bourne recounts a string of related supernatural tales, his modern-day fables notably centering around an enchanted and malicious symbol-banging monkey toy stolen from the wizard Merlin. The film was later featured in the parodical television series Mystery Science Theater 3000, and has since gained a prominent cult following. Other activities, also in 1996, Bourne toured the United States on a bus to meet his fans and see the country. The trip was the subject of a 1997 documentary, Ernest Bourne on the Bus. He also served one year as the chairman of the National Salute to Hospitalized Veterans, visiting patients in many Department of Veterans Affairs medical centers. Work after 1999, starting in 1999, Bourne provided his voice talent at the animated sitcom SpongeBob SquarePants as the elderly superhero Mermaid Man. He expressed affection for this role in no small part for its popularity among children. After his death Nickelodeon re-aired all of the episodes in which Mermaid Man appeared in memoriam. Bourne also appeared as himself in the Simpsons episode Boy Scurs in the Hood, in addition to a number of television commercials. In 2000, he was the executive producer of Hoover, in which he was the only credited actor. In 2007, Bourne starred in the Hallmark original film A Grandpa for Christmas. He played a man who, after his estranged daughter ends up in the hospital after being in a car accident, discovers that he has a granddaughter he never knew about. She is taken into his care, and they soon become great friends. Bourne received a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor in a miniseries or motion picture made for television for his performance. At 90, he was the oldest Golden Globe nominee ever. Bourne's autobiography Ernie was published by Citadel Press in July 2008. Ernie is a loose, conversational recollection of highlights from his acting career and notable events from his personal life. On April 2, 2009, he appeared in the last episode of the long-running medical series ER. His role was that of a husband whose long marriage ended with his wife's death. In his final scene, his character is in a hospital bed lying beside his just-deceased wife. His performance garnered an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series, his third nomination and his first in 29 years. In 2009, at age 92, he starred as Frank, the main character of Another Harvest Moon, directed by Greg Swartz and also starring Piper Laurie and Anne Miara. On October 2, 2010, Bourne appeared as himself in a sketch on Saturday Night Live. On October 15, 2010, he appeared in Red, which was filmed earlier that year. In late 2011, Bourne completed what would be his last film, playing Rex Page in The Man Who Shook the Hand of Vicent Fernandez. Personal Life and Death 
Bourne married five times. His first wife was Rhoda Minns, whom he met while serving in the Navy. They had one daughter, Nancy. Then he married actress Katie Gerardo. Bourne's marriage to singer Ethel Merman lasted 32 days. Their divorce was finalized on May 25, 1965. He then married Donna Rancourt, with whom he had a son, Christopher and two daughters, Sharon and Diana. His fifth and last marriage was to Tova Trezenes, which lasted from February 24, 1973 until his death. He had a sister, Evelyn Velardi. His mother, Anna Bourne, died in 1949, of tuberculosis, just days before his first wedding. In 2000, Bourne received his 50-year pin as a Freemason in Abingdon Lodge No. 48, Abingdon, Virginia. He joined the Scottish Rite Valley of Los Angeles in 1964, received the KCCH in 1979, was coroneted a 33 degree Inspector General Honorary in 1983, and received the Grand Cross of the Court of Honor in 1991. Bourne was a heavy smoker until 1962, after which he became a militant anti-smoker. Bourne died of kidney failure on July 8, 2012 at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California with his family at his side. He was 95 years old. Honors Bourne's hometown of Hamden, Connecticut where he enjoyed a large and vocal following named a street in his honor. For 30 years, Bourne marched in Milwaukee's annual Great Circus Parade as the Grand Clown. In 1994, Bourne received the Ellis Island Medal of Honor from the National Ethnic Coalition of Organizations. In 1997, Bourne was the commencement speaker at Lakeland College, and received an honorary doctorate in Humane Letters in recognition of his distinguished acting career. In 1998, the Palm Springs, California, Walk of Stars dedicated a Golden Palm Star to him. Film Awards and Nominations Bourne won the 1955 Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of Marty Pelletti in the film Marty. At the time of his death, he was the oldest living recipient of the Best Actor Oscar. For his contribution to the motion picture industry, Ernest Bourne received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6324 Hollywood Boulevard. In 1996, he was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He was honored with the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award at the 17th Screen Actors Guild Awards, held January 30, 2011. Awards from Fraternal Groups, in 2000, Bourne received his 50-year pin as a Freemason in Abingdon Lodge No. 48, Abingdon, Virginia. He joined the Scottish Rite Valley of Los Angeles in 1964, received the KCCH in 1979, was coroneted a 33-degree Inspector General Honorary in 1983, and received the Grand Cross of the Court of Honor in 1991. He was also a member of the Loyal Order of Moose at that organization's lodge in Junction City, Oregon. He volunteered to be Stories of Service national spokesman, urging his fellow World War II vets to come forward and share their stories. Filmography, television, video games, quotes, Ernest, Spencer Tracy was the first actor I've seen who could just look down into the dirt and command a scene. He played a setup with Robert Ryan that way. He's looking down at the road and then he looks at Ryan at just the precise, right minute. I tell you, Rob could have stood on his head and zipped open his fly and the scene would have still been Mr. Traces. Ernest, the trick is not to become somebody else. You become somebody else when you're in front of a camera or when you're on stage. There are some people who carry it all the time. That, to me, is not acting. What you've got to do is find out what the writer wrote about and put it into your mind. This is acting. Not going out and researching what the writer has already written. This is crazy. Ernest, everything I do has a moral to it. Yes, I've been in films that have had shootings. I made The Wild Bunch, which was the beginning of the splattering of blood and everything else. But there was a moral behind it. The moral was that, by golly, bad guys got it. That was it. Yeah. Ernest, ever since they opened the floodgates with Clark Gable saying, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn.
somebody's ears pricked up and said, Oh boy, here we go. Writers used to make such wonderful pictures without all that swearing, all that cursing. And now it seems that you can't say three words without cursing. And I don't think that's right. Ernest on drugs, no, I've never done anything. At least, not to my knowledge. I once took a bunch of goofballs by accident. They looked like candy. They were in a little bowl at a party. I grabbed a handful and went to town. That was some New Year's Eve. I didn't have a coherent thought till February. Ernest on his marriage to Ethel Merman, biggest mistake of my life. I thought I was marrying Rosemary Clooney. Ernest on his $5,000 salary for playing the eponymous lead in Marty, which won him a Best Actor Oscar. I would have done it for nothing. Ernest on women's rights, they tried it the wrong way. You can't expect anyone to take you seriously if you burn your undies and tell me I'm a pig. That's why it failed. Too many ugly broads telling me that they don't want to sleep with me. Who wanted you anyway? Ernest, I'm 81 years old and I like to speak my mind. As a legacy, on the day I die, I'd like to have a newspaper publish all the things that I find wrong in the United States today. And my first would be to get rid of the politicians. References Additional sources, Ernest Bourne Biographies in Navy History Naval Historical Center, Department of the Navy March 8, 2008 Retrieved March 23, 2008 A. Wise, James Stars in Blue, Movie Actors in America's Sea Services Annapolis, Maryland, Naval Institute Press, 1997 ISBN 1557509379 OCS 36 million eight hundred twenty four thousand seven hundred twenty four. External links, Ernest Born at the Internet Movie Database, Ernest Born at the Internet Broadway Database, Ernest Born at the TCM Movie Database, Ernest Born at All Movie, Ernest Born Interview Video at the Archive of American Television, Ernest Born. Find a Grave. Retrieved June 12, 2013 A.